Hello Newtonians! In the previous video, we learned what tolerance analysis is and the basic steps to calculating tolerance stackup. In this video, we will show you the influence of different dimensioning techniques on tolerance accumulation and show you the report format that you could use to document your analysis. We will not consider geometrical product specification, ASME standard name, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GDNT. This topic will be addressed separately. We already learned the basics of the tolerance stackup analysis, but we are far from mastery on this topic. There are many other things still to be learned. For the beginner level, I would say that two more things are essential to learn. How does dimensioning method influences tolerance stackup and how to communicate results with others, report format. Understanding this will give you a strong foundation for the tolerance analysis as more complex examples and topics. Also, you will be able to use the knowledge from this and the previous video immediately and start building up your experience. The more examples you do, the faster you will internalize the basics, and you will be ready to move on to the other related topics. Influence of Dimensioning Methods on Tolerance Accumulation Let us now examine how the tolerancing methods are affecting tolerance accumulation. Let us look into the example of three different methods used for specifying component dimensions. The component in all three examples is identical, and the only difference is the dimensioning method used. Therefore, we will analyze each method and determine how each of these methods is influencing our overall tolerances. Parallel Dimensioning We are interested in calculating the distance between points A and B. When performing the tolerance stackup analysis with parallel dimensioning, we have two dimensions contributing to the tolerance accumulation. The missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.6 millimeters. Chain dimensioning. When performing the tolerance stackup analysis with chain dimensioning, we have four dimensions contributing to the tolerance accumulation between points A and B. The missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.9 millimeters. Combined dimensioning. When we combine parallel and chain dimensioning and perform the tolerance stackup analysis, we have three dimensions contributing to the tolerance accumulation between points A and B. The missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.7 millimeters. Conclusion on the influence of dimensioning methods on tolerance accumulation. From our previous calculation, we have the following results. Parallel dimensioning, the missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.6 millimeters. Chain dimensioning, the missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.9 millimeters. Combined dimensioning, the missing dimension is 15 plus or minus 0.7 millimeters. From the results, we can clearly see that the dimensioning method influences our tolerance buildup. The chain dimensioning method contributes the most to the tolerance accumulation, followed by combined dimensioning. The least influence of the tolerance buildup has the parallel dimensioning. With that in mind, when dimensioning different features on the components, it is necessary to be aware of the methods we are using and how they influence the overall tolerances of our parts. Unfortunately, there is no one fit at all rule on when to use which method. The best way to learn this is through deliberate practice. Create as many drawings as possible and be aware of the dimensioning technique you are using. Then, think about and study how these dimensioning techniques influence your tolerance stackup. Remember, the theory is useless if not applied in real life. Tolerance Stackup Report We want to make sure that we are communicating the results of our stackup analysis without any ambiguity. Therefore, it is advisable to use the same template for all your stackup reports. By template, I mean a predefined form with all relevant information written in it. The template you will use for reporting depends on the company, project, or product. There are no hard-to-find rules for creating a template as long as the template and the documentation process are adequately defined. There are a few reasons why I am suggesting creating a report template. Every report will have the same crucial information written in it regardless of the report's author. Once people have learned how your report looks and what it represents, they will no longer be distracted by the form of your document, but they will be focused on the content and results of the report. You and your company look more professional. If every report contains the same basic information regardless of the author, it gives a positive impression to everyone you are working with. We can communicate the results in different ways, and I prefer to use an Excel worksheet as a working document and share results as a PDF. If you use particular software for stackup analysis, you can probably use a template that goes with that software or create your template. Later on, I will share what I think is important on the tolerance analysis report. The reasons that I am using the Excel worksheet for the tolerance stackup reports are 
easy to create templates based on my project requirements. Templates are easily reusable and adjusted to different problems. Setting up formulas once an instantaneous recalculation of any variable change. In one document, it is possible to have multiple sheets, each sheet representing different revision. Possibility of locking the document to prevent any unauthorized change. Easy to export PDF file. In general, great online support for software usage. Excel is in wide use, and it is pretty affordable, price-wise. What to consider when creating the stack-up report. When creating the stack-up report, or any other report, we always have to keep in mind that there will be people who will read it, who are not as close to the topic as we are. For that reason, we have to make sure that we document everything with as many details as possible. So let us now discuss what every excellent report should have. Part number, revision, and name, we have to define on which part the stack-up analysis was performed. Revision is also important due to the possibility of the revision change. It is possible that with the change of the part revision, the stack-up analysis is no longer valid. Stack-up report details, it is more than advisable to specify the stack-up number, date of creation, and document revision. The stack-up number can be defined as part of your document management process on the company level, and some part of it can be the same for all of the reports. For example, stack-up report numbers start with 300. Responsible persons, you want to write the name of the report's author when the report was created. Then, whoever will look into the report, later on, can contact the author in case if they have some questions. Also, I would suggest you add the name of the person who checked the report after you. It is usually defined in the document management process on the company level that all official documents should be checked and signed. Objective of the stack-up analysis, in as few possible words, you want to communicate an ambiguous and straightforward message about the purpose of the stack-up analysis and what you want to accomplish with it. This gives both the author and the reader a clear statement about what we are doing here. Dimension details, each dimension used in the stack-up analysis has a reason why it is there. It is pretty simple to identify them when doing the stack-up analysis on one part. But it is not that easy when you have an assembly with many different dimensions. So I would suggest that you write down the part number and revision for each dimension number. If it is assembly, write down the item number and a short description of the dimension. Calculation part, of course, you want to include your calculation in your report. I would also suggest adding the picture with the number dimensions in your report. Notes. Include any relevant notes for proper conducting of the stack-up analysis. Notes can be written in any form, as plain text, bullet points, numbered lists, etc. Assumptions. You can write what assumptions you made to conduct the stack-up analysis. For example, it was assumed that parts are correctly aligned, etc. This is an important part of the stack-up report, and I suggest you write any assumptions you made, no matter how small it is. Suggested action. You finished your stack-up analysis, and now what? This is the place where you want to write further steps. For example, change the nominal value of dimension 5 to xy, tolerance to x.xy, etc. The Tolerance Stack-Up Report Template I created a stack-up report template that you can download for free, as an Excel workbook, based on the points above. The first page contains all the relevant textual and numerical information related to the stack-up analysis. The second page is reserved for the picture of the stack-up problem with all the relevant information. The black frame around the report represents the edge of the A4 paper. For an example of how this report should look populated, keep watching. Tolerance Stack-Up Report, Bean Trolley Example For the purpose of this exercise, I designed a simple manual bean trolley. The bean trolley is designed to be used on an HEB100 standard wide flange beam. As part of this exercise, we want to determine that we do not have interference between the beam trolley wheel and the beam in the worst case tolerance scenario. Furthermore, we will create a stack-up report for this problem. In my previous video, I explained how to do stack-up analysis. We will not go step by step. Instead, we will focus only on the stack-up report. Here is how the stack-up report for this problem looks like. We have a two-page report with all the relevant data written in it. The picture itself does not have to be so detailed, I would recommend it, but at least I would add a picture with the dimensions, dimension numbers, and balloons with the item number, for assemblies. Documenting calculations like this is beneficial in case that something goes wrong in the future. You can always pull out your report and explain what you did and when. The proof that you forwarded this report to the person who should do the next step will make an iron case for you. In this way, you are protecting both yourself and the company from any damage that could occur if this report was not taken into account.
With this video, together with part 1, we cover the basics of tolerance analysis and tolerance stackup. This can serve for all the purposes that do not include geometrical product specification, ASME standard name, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GDNT. Like, in everything else, to become comfortable with this analysis, you need to practice and build your experience. Just be patient and keep grinding. Did you learn anything new in this video? Let us know in the comments below. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up, comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.